What's up guys, it's me again, Crushed Pixel. What I have for you today is an external tool um, using which you can create Minecraft JSON books. And you may ask, what are JSON books? Well, they were added in Minecraft 1.8 and you can do stuff similar to Telra with it, but a bit cooler, of course. And so I just gave myself an example book by Crushed Pixel, which was generated using this tool. And if I right click it, you see, this book contains JSON code, it has different colors and stuff, and it has hover events, which was not possible before, and it has some really fancy text there, and it has epic click events. Oh yeah. And on the second page, you can do much more with them. My score is 42, and if I do scoreboard player set score to 99, for example, and re-give myself the book, you see, the score is 99. Isn't that great? And this is just a fraction of what you can do using uh, this external tool. And I will just flip over here and start the JSON book generator, which was written entirely in Java. No external stuff needed. Just run this jar file. And I'm pretty sure that everybody who has Minecraft on its PC um, already has Java installed. So this is it. Um, this is the main navigation. Down there we can input title and author, so we can just do that. Um, tutorial book. And the author is myself. And I could now copy this thing to clipboard. And for some reason I left Minecraft here. And then if I just paste this into a command block, um, what I get is a book. Um, which is of course empty, but uh, it is by myself. And if I now add some pages to it to give it content, all I need to do is click there and add element. So now we added a new page to this pages node and you see it complains because the text is empty and it cannot generate a valid JSON. Therefore, um, we have to write some text here. For example, hello world, which is probably the first thing any programmer would ever write. And yeah, so now if we click copy to clipboard and paste it into a command block again, what you're going to get is this book with a simple hello world page. But of course that's not very spectacular yet. So what are we going to do? Um, we can stylize this text using colors. For example, we can make it uh, gold and bold and underlined. So if we uh, repeat the copying and stuff, uh, what we get is the same stuff, just gold and underlined and bold. Um, so and I'm in this view now, meaning this page is selected. So the root element of this page is what we have here. It's this text with hello world and we can select the color here and whether it's bold, underlined, italic and so on. But uh, what if we want to have parts of the text on this page uh, in a different color? For example, we say hello world, and then we want um, uh, to welcome the person who reads the book. So what we need to do is add a different element, but not to the pages um, node, because that would add as another page. Uh, but however, we select the page we want to append to and click add element. And you see, to the extra tag, um, this element here was added, and we can take another text, for example, we write mate, and then it says hello world mate, and we can um, specify a color here, but if this, because this is the child of this um, element, uh, it's going to take over the color, so if I do not change that, um, it's going to keep the color. However, I automatically made it, um, so if the bold and underline tag was true before, it sets it to false, because you can overwrite this using um, these checkboxes. So now what we have is a second element which is very similar to this one but only it's a child of this one meaning it gets appended behind it. And we can just keep the color by selecting none and make it obfuscated. So if I copy it to clipboard again, paste it, you see it says hello world made and we have that text behind it. Okay. And you can um, add an infinite amount of elements, uh, of sub-elements to any element. But what I recommend is have 
uh, this root element per page and add several extra elements to it by just selecting it and clicking add element. So now I have the next text element and if I want to have a new line, which uh, would be a good idea here, because yeah, you see the line does not have much space left. Everything we do is write backslash n and it will automatically create a new line. And um, let's get all of the stuff um, a bit more advanced. So now we have a new line of text and we can say click here for a surprise. And then um, we can actually add a click event um, after stylizing it however we wish example making it italic and then um, now that we check the click event here you can see that there are three possibilities for the action run command suggest command and open URL um, only run command and open URL are working yet because suggest command does not work with JSON books but maybe Mojang is going to add this uh, to uh, Minecraft at one point so I just let it in okay so let's run a command when clicking if I um, select open URL, it's going to ask the user to um, if he wants to open that URL. For example, if I want to link to my YouTube channel, I do open URL and then I just go uh, youtube.com slash crush pixel and stuff. But um, in this case, I just want to run the command um, for surprise slash say I love cookies. And this is the command that gets run by the player. Um, you have to note that if you do a run command click event, um, it's going to be executed like the user was typing it into the chat and then pressing enter. So there can only be a hundred characters. Uh, the command cannot be longer. And if the user is not OP, um, he cannot execute commands like slash give. It will just tell him that he doesn't have permission. Um, so if you want to trigger redstone events, um, you should use the trigger scoreboard. Just Google that because um, this can be executed by non-OPs as well. So, okay, so I just have this one command here. I copy it to clipboard again and simply paste it. And you see, click here for a surprise. Yay, I love cookies. And this is the command that was executed. So let's just continue. Um, what else can we have? We now have nested elements. Um, click events and color and all of the other style stuff. Um, another thing that we can have is, of course, uh, a hover event. So let's just make a new line. Hover here. Then we select hover event and click change hover event. Now a new um, window is going to open and here we have four different options like here we have the action drop down but here it's actually these tabs and whichever we select this is going to be the action so when we hover it can either show us text show us an item show us an entity or show us an achievement so the text is pretty basic it's like it's the same editor that we have here except that you can add multiple extras here and remove them using this list so i can write fancy text and then Make it gold right here, bold and green. So if we hover uh, over that text now, it will tell us fancy text right here. So I just copy this again, paste it. Fancy text right here. Yep, that's exactly how it should work. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, there can, of course, be different hover events. For example, show item. Here we have, um, we can define which item should be displayed when hovering. For example, we can have a Minecraft stone item. The name should be Epic Stone. And you can add some enchantments here if you want. Um, for example, this Epic Stone has uh, projectile protection, which is, of course, not useful. And it will not protect you when hovering, of course. But this is just um, just for fun. This stone has ancient power. And this is just a law, which means the subtitles. Subtitle 2. And if we click, click Enter again, copy to clipboard, and paste here. 
This time it displaces this epic stone with projectile protection 4 and the lore that we inputted. Okay, another thing you can do using the hover event um, is showing achievements and here we simply have a drop down list which achievement or statistic we can want to display. For example, junk fished, everything we need to do is okay. Copy it to clipboard and copy paste again in here. No big deal. And if we hover now, it shows us junk fished statistic. This is a bit more interesting um, when taking, for example, build hoe. Copy paste it again. The book we get uh, will show us all of the details for the ach achievement, like time to farm and what we need to do. So everything you need to do therefore is just take something out of this drop down list, which is pretty easy. And this is already everything about the hover events. Uh, let's just finish it by telling you about the score selector and translate feature. So instead of having a normal text, what we can have as well is just, let's just add a new line here. Um, we can have a selector. So if we do add P, um, it's just going to write my name in the chat or in the book and let me make it green because I'm fabulous. Copy it to clipboard and you should see. Here we go. We have my name, Oli Oli MC. Um, you can of course target uh, anything else there, for example, at E, which should find every mob that I spawn. So let's just spawn this guy over here. With the add E selector, it's going to show O'Leary MC and Zombie Pigman. Okay, uh, let's go to Peaceful again. And you can just put take any selector, even with teams and scores and so on, which is pretty nice. And then we have the score, which I showed you earlier in the example in the beginning. Um, here you can take another selector or you simply write an asterisk, which makes it automatically select the player who reads the book. So if I read the book, um, this is basically the same as at P. I could write my name inside. Oh wait, what did I do wrong? I could uh, write my name there. Or I could uh, simply write this asterisk and for some reason... Okay, and the objective is the objective name. So if I do scoreboard objectives list, you see I have that score objective here, which is of type dummy. So the objective is called score. And now it's going to show me in green and italic um, my score of the specific objective, which is 99, as I made it earlier. And yeah, so this is pretty cool. However, if I change it, for example, I do scoreboard players set uh, score 127. I need to re-give myself the book before it uh, is affected. Because if I look at it now again, you see um, it's going to stay at 127 even though it's one, uh, 1299. So I need to give myself the book again and it's going to be updated. Um, I use this technique of clearing and giving it again in my C4 video. So that's not a big deal. And the final thing we can have instead of text, score or selector is translate. And this is um, a bit more complicated because uh, what we can have there is the translation of, um, of anything in Minecraft. So for example, uh, let's take item.cookie.name and copy to clipboard. You see it's going to write cookie in green. And if I now change my language to uh, byte, here we go, come on. Um, you can see that it's going to show cakes because that's a German translation. So in whatever language I am using the translate, um, feature, you can translate anything. And a list of all of these keys uh, can be found in the video description because um, 
of course you I could not know that it's item.cookie.name before um it's like a lot of stuff any items the tr the statistics basically anything that can be translated is on this list and you can use the translation of any of that using this translate tag um here yeah. and this is everything you can do let me just get back over there and get the very first book the example book um so this is basically just a hover event a click event and another page with a score um i did not include a selector there and yeah you can do some pretty awesome stuff with that as an example take my c4 in vanilla minecraft video where i used the trigger command and stuff to let a player um plant c4 with a time he specifies in one of these little books however back then i created um the, the json for the book by hand and it was a lot of work so i decided to write a tool for it um yeah it was a lot of work it took me about two weeks and yeah if you want to support me of course you can do so on paypal i have a donate link down there and otherwise you can just um, send any bugs you might encounter to me um, write it in the minecraft forum post which is in the description as well because um, there it helps more than in the comments below but this is just a very um, probably a bit long tutorial how to create json books using this tool it makes stuff a lot easier for map makers i think and yeah from a couple of hours um, it makes this a couple of seconds thanks for watching the download stuff is in the video description make sure to share with your friends because this is really a tool which improves map making by a lot if you want support my work on paypal see you in the next video bye